Hello and welcome to my podcast, Live from the Heart. I'm delighted to welcome you today for this episode, which will be a solo episode. And I'm sharing with you, celebrating with you, that I'm turning 41 years old. And as I'm filming, it's a little bit earlier, just a few days before, because I'm going to take some days off. And I'm happy to celebrate with you and also to share with you how I stay healthy in a toxic world. So this is uh, an important podcast for me because uh, being healthy is really a big part of my life because my life took a turning point when I was 28, 29 years old, when I really decided to take care of my health. I had insomnia and anxiety and my stomach was always upside down and I didn't digest well. I was always stressed, always anxious. So I took care of this through therapy, naturopathy, sophrology, meditation, EFT, and a lot of things have helped me all together. And then years after years, I started to feel that I had more vitality, more energy. And also I felt lighter, not only in my body, but also just more connected to my soul, more connected to my heart, and more capable to listen to my intuition and to the synchronicities and more able to follow my heart and go all in with everything that I am. And I believe that this is what made me successful because I could remove the, I would say the toxics, toxic stuff, which were all in me and around me to kind of shed what was not necessary to be able to keep what's really important. And I intend to keep doing that. So as I'm getting older, I feel that I'm actually getting more healthy, which is yeah, that's that's kind of the opposite way, counterintuitive when you think about it, because we were raised in this world where we, we are used to think that um, we're supposed to have diseases as we grow older, that it's normal to get diabetes or gain weight or um, just feel, you know, more tired and all those things. And actually, I feel so much better now that I'm turning 41 than I was when I was 20 or 25 or even 30 and even 35 like really so I would say that it took effort but it's not really effort it's really understanding what's what's important and make space for what's important and tuning in to what feels right in the body and not only listening to some kind of pseudo rules that people impose into you but really listen to what's right for you And although some people around you might have different diets, just keep the ones that are the right for you and the right habits that fit you. That's the most important. So today I'm going to share how I stay healthy and maybe it will inspire to create more health for yourself. But what I'm doing is not necessarily what you need. Just take what you need and leave what you don't need. And maybe it will help you stick to your goals and decide to be healthier and happier as you're aging gracefully and beautifully. Uh, A lot of people tell me that I look much younger than my age, and I agree with that. Also, I feel very energized, and I, I feel that I could be 30 easily. I just see a bit of difference in terms of uh, my gray hair. So I would start just with this. I have a little bit more gray hair now. So if you're watching the video, you can probably see them just here, just at the the beginning of my, just at the roots. And I've been watching those videos from Brian Johnson. I don't know if you know him, but he has a lot of free videos on YouTube and you can you can watch them. And uh, he's doing something with his hair. He's not dyeing them, dyeing it. I don't want to dye my hair because I know that this is hell. Once you start, it's just like forever. And also I want to embrace aging. But if I can use a natural product that will stimulate my hair to just continue grow black, that's the goal, then I would love to use that. So he's recommended a a product that I bought. So it's going to come in a few days. And basically, you just massage your your scalp with the product. You can just follow him and then just follow the link and stuff. It's easy to find. And basically, it stimulates the growth of the hair being still dark, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to start that. This is the only thing I want to do. And then when they're going to turn gray like for real I might even them like I don't know how it's gonna grow gray white and maybe maybe I'll go like full 
white like to avoid the transition i don't know yet how i'm gonna do that but i'm actually excited about it and i feel very blessed to be able to grow older and um, not everyone has the privilege to to be healthy and continue advancing in age not everyone has a long beautiful healthy life and i want to be the living proof that it's possible to do it without using too many chemicals and without without hiding it and it's just a gift that we have so i'm happy about it also i'm not super attached to my physical appearance for me my physical appearance is more of a reflection of how i feel inside and that's why also people when they meet me feel the youth because i'm actually very vital as a person and kind of radiant from the inside and i prefer that than attaching to physical beauty which is just like a facade instead of you know being the light bulb from the inside which is i think more interesting and i recently listened to a podcast from kate northrup with a guest of her i don't remember her name and this woman she was sharing a story about her grandmother and it was about the funeral of her grandmother and uh, she said that everybody every guest at the funeral was saying how much her grandmother was beautiful she was 87 when she passed and everybody was saying oh she was so beautiful and she was a very vain woman that was only interested in showing that she was beautiful and that's people what people remembered of her and when I heard that, I was, oh my God, this is terrible. And the guest, the, the podcast guest, when she heard that about her, her grandmother, she wished people knew how kind she was and how brave she was or what she's achieved in her life. And yeah, I mean, that's what I want people to remember me for, not for a facade. So yeah, that's it. That's just I just wanted to put it out there because I know that a lot of women are very concerned about how they look while aging but I think it's all about being healthy and happy and radiant from the inside and then and then it's just awesome so let's embrace wrinkles and all the rest that is said then now next step what do I do to stay healthy so first thing first because I was an insomniac for so many years sleep is so important to me it's it's one top priority it's not always easy because I don't always sleep in one place. I have like two places. And right now I'm not traveling much. But when I travel also my sleep is impacted. But most of the time I have between seven and eight hours of sleep. So this is pretty good. <laughs> and I try to improve my deep sleep. I have a Oura ring. So I've been tracking my sleep and my steps. And many, many things with this ring for two years already. And it's funny because at first I didn't want it. My husband bought one for himself. And he's like, do you want to buy one? thinking I don't know but the golden one is cute so I'll buy one <laughs> so I bought one and actually I started to really love it because if you want to improve something um, it's actually great to be able to track and to actually say oh yeah I see a difference I feel a difference but actually the numbers are also different so it's proving me something for example one thing which was really sig significant for us is that we used to sleep much more longer and deeper in Costa Rica before we moved here to Bali. And then in Bali, it just dropped dramatically. So we had to catch up with the sleep. It's getting a little bit better. Although now we have cats and they tend to wake us up in the night. But because we go to bed super early, so here comes my routine. So I go to bed most of the time early between 8.30 and 9.30, I would say, which is super early. And Christian is actually laughing about it because when we used to live in Berlin, when we actually got together during COVID, that we started to live together, for me, sleeping before 10 was just insane. I was like, no, we have to stay up until at least 10.30. And he was fighting it so hard because of me. So we were watching movies and talking about many things late at night and it was fighting for me. But now that we live here, also because living in the tropics is really you have to kind of adapt to the schedule because it gets dark super early in the evening. So at 6, 6.30 in the night, it's just super dark. And then in the morning, everything wakes up at 5.30 or 6 in the morning, like the birds and the, it's alive, the motorbikes outside, the roosters at 4.30 and all the things. So if you kind of miss the shot, the train of sleeping, then in the morning, you cannot really sleep late. It doesn't really work. 
I have an eye mask and I have earplugs, but it's not really the same. Also, again, I sleep with cats now and in the morning they're just awake and just party in the room. So, yeah, we might at some point not sleep with them, but I do enjoy the cuddles. So for now, I choose to. So I go to bed between 8.30 and 9.30 usually, and then I wake up around 6. So that's the thing. But I don't necessarily get up. So sometimes I sleep again, and sometimes I just stay in bed. And I just, you know, just hang out there with the cats and just, yeah, that's it. Christian gets up because he needs to have a morning routine, and I love to spend time in bed. And this is like my solo time. I journal. I scroll on Instagram. I just write my goals. I play with my kittens. Yeah, I just I just love it. This is fun. I answer my friends. That's what I love to do. Then this is like one pillar. And then another pillar of my life is walking. I love walking. I'm not big into exercise. I don't really like it. I love dancing. I love making love. I love I love walking. That's it. I tried to go to the gym last year. It lasted for about four or six four or five months. I think I'll go again to the gym in the future. Um, the problem is that the gym that I was that I signed up for is like half an hour from my home, so it's half an hour, and I do my session and then I come back, so it's just too much effort. But yeah, let's see. Maybe I build a gym gym at home. Christian would like that too, so maybe we do that. So right now I walk. Until June, I used to walk ten thousand steps a day, and I track them. And sometimes I was over it, but rarely under it. That's like kind of a goal of mine. And from July, I've decided to raise the bar and to walk ten, uh, fifteen thousand steps per day. So then it's on average. So sometimes I'll do more, sometimes I'll do a little bit less, but I will try to not do less. Um, I live by the beach, so it's pretty easy. I can have long walks and it's amazing. And I go by any weather, whether it's sunny and super hot or whether it's kind of rainy. I take a raincoat, I take an umbrella and I just do it. So that's important to me. What else? Um, I Sometimes I walk a little bit less. Like, for example, when I'm on my period, I will walk a little bit less because I don't want to push it. But overall, what's important is that I... On average, did 15,000 for this month and August. Then I love to go to the sauna. So I do that sometimes after lymphatic massage. I could do that also at the gym where I was. And we're currently buying a sauna so that in our future home, which we're building, we're going to have a sauna too. And I intend to do it, well, every other day. That's, that's my goal. Like, yeah, four times a week, that would be perfect to go to the sauna. What else? So I was talking about lymphatic drainage. So I love those massages. I go to a place in Chenggu that I fell in love with. It was, I think, last January um, or December. I was doing a detox, like a blood detox from uh, Zen Cleanse. And they really recommended to go to the sauna and do lymphatic drainage. And so I found this place in Chenggu and I loved it. So now I go almost once a week. And it's one hour massage and it's kind of gentle, but at some point it gets harder because she uses wooden tools to really scrape the skin and, you know, help the, the, the lymph to just flow more. And today, exactly today, something happened, something interesting because I'm doing something else. I'm doing ozone therapy. So ozone, basically, they take your blood. I still have a, a mark on my, on my arm today. So they take your blood, not so much, just a little bit of it, like a small glass. Like a cup, I think, like in America, you would say the amount of a cup, something like that. And then they will mix it with ozone in a little container, and then they will re-inject it into your body. And that will stimulate your body to be able to detox better, to be more oxygenized, to just fight better viruses, toxins, heavy metals, and all the things. So I've been doing that for a few weeks. I do sometimes ozone therapy, sometimes a detox cocktail, which is made of glutathione, vitamin uh, D, and vitamin c and b12 and some other things so it's just super cool so i get that every week i try to go once a week for that and i might increase for the summer because this is really a healthy summer for me so today because i did the lymphatic massage before the ozone i could see the difference between last time that i went where my blood was actually kind of bright it was bright um red last time that i did it and this time it was dark like brown and 
she asked me what I did before and I said I had a lymphatic massage and she said oh the toxins are coming up so this blood needs to be detoxed so that was super interesting and today I didn't have time to do a sauna before the sessions but that's also why it's important for me to do the sauna after the lymphatic massage because it will help and open up the pores and just put it out there you know just clean it and sometimes I also just go for saunas and hammams into special places here in Chengdu too and I just hang out there and I do several rounds this is something that I did a lot when I became a naturopath just to just open my skin and get used to to trans to sweat more because I used to not sweat so much and now it's super easy and also just living in the tropics I kind of sweat all the time and doing the steps I sweat so this is pretty healthy um, I'm currently doing this detox because I noticed that I'm less healthy than I was when I moved here. So we did a lot of tests when we moved a year ago. We we hadn't had um, blood tests for a while. And then we did blood tests like a year ago exactly. And it was interesting to see that a year ago, my blood cells were more active and I just had to detox my liver, improve one thing and another thing. And this time there was more toxins in my blood. And I think this is because of the lifestyle here. There are a lot of uh, toxins in the air. There is rice fields around me in the environment. And then there is a lot of toxicity on the roads because of the trucks and because of the motorbikes. So I need to buy a better mask. Currently I'm using like a mask that I used to where uh, that I had to wear before because of COVID it's like a silver fabric but I need something which is like more preventing the toxins to get into my nose um, also I go dancing uh, this is something that I really enjoy I started a little bit more than a year ago Brazilian Zouk and I take classes and I go to social and this is awesome because it's always more steps, more movements, different movements. It makes my body stronger and I enjoy it. And I really believe that what we enjoy is more helpful for the body than the things that are, you know, forced. So sometimes we have to force a little bit because we don't feel like doing things and sometimes it must be done. But I'm not overweight. I'm healthy. I would rather keep doing what feels good in my body so that I'm actually interested in doing it and that it's a long-term vision. I want to stay healthy in a long-term vision. I don't want to like um, push things within a few weeks or months and then say I'm never doing that again. You know what I mean? So I choose sustainable things which are good for my body. And my body thanks me. So what else? Um... I've been seeing this guy, Phil Hunt. He lives in Ubud. He's great. He's an osteopath. I have an episode with him. And he's helped me a lot with the neck pain and the upper um, shoulders pain. And we've done a lot of work. It was about releasing the emotions stored in the body, as well as osteopathy. And it's helped me a lot this year. Uh, it's been a year that I've been seeing him already. And it was pretty regular, like once a month. And then, um, yeah. It, it feels so much better now. And I also go see local healers. So I go see this guy is doing like massages and then he wraps me up in herbs and then he puts like some plastic around and I sweat under it. And again, I release the toxins and then I smell like curry for the rest of the day. But this is perfect. So I also do these kind of things. I do quite a lot of things. Like every week I do at least, at least one or two things for healing, which is pretty cool. And then uh, what else? Um, well, I eat well. I eat when I'm hungry. I usually have two meals per day. And um, they always have protein, which was not always the case before. So, for example, this morning was, um, well, it was a bit different, but I would say cheese and meat with a little bit of bread. And that was it. Yesterday was bacon and eggs, bread, salad. I always have bread, like sourdough bread. I eat bread. I love bread. So I'm not anti-bread. Let's, let's say it. I'm French. <laughs> and uh, always sourdough bread, like ancient grains, uh, digestible and stuff. And then uh, I have another meal in the afternoon. And actually, my husband is currently waiting for me. We got a meal delivered. So today I'm going to have chicken. There is also salad. I got fries. I eat fries, you know. And I had a snack in the middle of the day, which was made of fruits. 
Um, so that's basically it. I'm very much of an intuitive eater and I try to not eat late in the night. Like I have, like right now I'm going to eat at 4.30 in the afternoon and I'm not going to eat after. So it, it's really great to eat early, especially if you want to go to bed early, then you have plenty of time to digest. And also it gives like a longer time for digestive rest so that actually you're not, um, overwhelming your digestive system and this is this is really good so that's it um what else do i want to share i take supplements currently so i take what do i take i take turmeric i take zinc i take something called azea to help my body detox azea redox that's the name i do the iv the ozone um i take something in the night to support my sleep it's called calm the fuck down <laughs> that's the name of the product i think the brand is called grassroots i will find it easily in bali and that's basically it i i work on my emotional well-being with like oils and stuff i'm currently using oils from one of my former therapists which became a friend Ameyo Malm. she created like oils that I put on my body to work on the emotions. So I'm using that, which is pretty cool. And that's it. I eat sugar, I eat sweets, but um, I'm very contained. Like I'm going to eat like one cookie or even a half cookie and that's fine. But I'm going to eat like every day a little bit of sweets. So I know people who cannot do that. They have to eat like all the things. If they open the chocolate tablet, they have to eat the whole tablet. But I'm not like that. So I feel very blessed because I guess this is also helpful for me to stay at a balanced weight. Uh, I remember when I was um, 18 or 19 years old, I was not even 50 kilos. And now I'm like 48 and a half or 49 kilos, which is about the same. But I was like 20 years ago. I can fit in the same clothes. So that's pretty cool. Although I didn't have kids, let's say that. But this is pretty cool. I, I'm intending to stay the same weight my whole life. I'm happy with it. I like my body type. I'm, I'm feeling healthy. But I know that I'm going to lose muscle as I'm going to age. So I know that I, I need to eat more protein, quality protein, and I need to start lifting weight. But I'm going to do that when I'm ready. Okay, one step at a time. I know life has sent me a lot of signs in the form of a boyfriend, which is a fitness interest instructor in the form of Christian is also doing it and people around me lifting weights too. So it's going to come. I'm, I'm getting there, but step by step. And then I would say that one of the main thing which is important to me is uh, following my heart, keep following my heart, keep creating from the heart, keep being myself, speaking my voice, speaking my truth and honoring who I am and uh, setting boundaries with people and all those things I believe it keeps me healthy like this is super important it's number one you know if I feel disrespected or if I feel that I disrespect myself if I feel that I need to upgrade my environment this this is all those things that I've been learning to do with coaching with with the past few years and every year it's improving every year I feel more myself every year I feel more um, connected to my needs my desires and owning them and being proud of them and proud of who I am not wanting to be someone else and I believe that this is super helpful to grow healthy and just you know develop as a person and this is what we want we want to be I know that in English it's not nice but more full of ourselves, of who we truly are so that we can radiate from our light and this is who I want to be in this life so this is more important Voila. I hope it was helpful for you to know a little bit of behind the scenes of my life. And uh, um, if you have questions, just send them to me and to my team and I can do more episodes and I can share more of the things that I'm doing. I know that I'm very blessed to live in Bali because I have access to a lot of things, which was not the case when I was living in Europe during COVID. I didn't have access to so many things. When I was living in Costa Rica, I was so remote, but still I was walking, still I was I was sleeping well, I was eating well. So those things are the main, in, main ingredients. And then on top of that, you can add the supplements, you can have add the IV therapy, you can add like many different things, but this is like the basics that you must learn for yourself. I believe that life had has sent me challenges um, to actually inquire things, you know? It made me stronger, it made me more smart. I ask more questions now. Uh, regarding health like for now 
for example, we try to to be really picky with the restaurants because a lot of restaurants use use vegetable oil, which is actually canola oil, um, sunflower oil, and all those things. This is toxic for the body, so we try to avoid that. Although I still eat fries, so on the fries that will be probably. But the rest, no. Like we are we are trying to be really mindful about that and then choose your poison you know <laughs> you get to choose and some some people will choose to inject themselves poison some people will choose to put poison on their skin and things like that um well i didn't tap on that but i use products which are organic which seems to be like it's pretty obvious to me both on the skin and also to clean the house and to wash the clothes and all the things which is super important so and also in the environment, we're building a house and we're going to have non-toxic paint and like the healthiest material that we can find, not for everything, but for most of the things, which is pretty cool too. Um, that's it for me. Uh, thank you again for following this podcast. If you've enjoyed it, please uh, share it to your friends and to your community. And I'd like to add that there is a promotion. My, my team is currently preparing promotions. For, so from July 9th, to July 15, you're going to have access to some of my programs with a big, big discount of 30% off. So just follow the link probably below this episode. You're going to find uh, which um, which programs are discounted. There is, in French, Je Moto Coach, Bundle Masterclasses, um, Create Your Abundance from the right from the Heart Space, Créer sa dream team, uh, bien dormir, je m'autorise, empowered relationships in English and in French, inspiré, décolle. So many things are discounted. So enjoy. It's only once a year. It's usually on my birthday. So this is for you to 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 make the most of it, you know. And this is yeah one of the ingredients that I use to to stay healthy and happy in this life. Just being connected to who I am, and I hope my coaching programs will help you to do that too. If you have any questions, just send them to me. I'm always happy to read you. And thank you for being part of my beautiful community because I feel very supported. I feel very loved and I love you too. Have a beautiful day.